Maybe you'll get a second estimate. Um, and maybe you meet somewhere in the middle, you know. Um, but don't be afraid to have those conversations uh, if it's if, if there's a lot of, uh, if you know something needs to be fixed or is 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 in bad shape. Welcome. This is the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping others through real estate investing. Our hosts interview guests from all aspects of real estate investing who generously share valuable experiences and advice. Whether you're starting out or an experienced investor, this is the show for you. Hello and how's it going? My name is Travis Shelton and welcome to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast where I interview guests who want to help others investing in real estate. We keep these fun and full of value and really looking forward to the discussion today with someone I think can help everybody with asset management and not necessarily a topic we've delved too much into yet on the podcast. So I'm happy to introduce to you all Gary Lipsky, an award-winning syndicator, podcast host, a national speaker, and best-selling author. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Gary. Thanks for having me, Travis. Absolutely. Um, well, would you give our audience maybe your 30-second elevator pitch, a little bit more about yourself and your real estate focus? Yeah, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Um, I sold a business at the end of 2016 and got into real estate full-time. And we focus on the Southwest market. So um, typically Phoenix and Tucson, that's where we've done all of our deals. But we've also been looking in uh, Albuquerque and Vegas and, and, and Denver as well. Uh, we do value-add multifamily. Um, yeah, that's our, our bread and butter. And uh, C and B class assets, typically 1970s and newer. And um, we've done a quarter over a quarter billion dollars in real estate transactions. No, that's amazing. Do you do any uh, non-accredited investor opportunities or just all accredited investor opportunities? Uh, the bulk of our deals have been uh, 506Bs. Uh, we okay. did, just launched a fund recently, but that's that's a 506C. But uh, So okay. we've kind of gone back and forth a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for sharing that. Um, well, we always start these, these podcasts off with some motivation. Would you like to share your motivational quote with the audience? Yeah, um, my quote would be, what gets uh, measured gets managed. And um, I think that was uh, by Peter Drucker. And so what he's saying there is, um, you know, if you're not if you're not looking at your data, if you're not measuring it, how do you, you know, how do you know if you're improving or, or going backwards? So that's it's just really really important, and that's uh, that's a core value of ours. I love it. Yeah, I think so much, so often people just get out there, and, and and I love people taking action, but also you got to be able to know where you're at. Where did you project, and are you meeting those projections, or are you not? And I think so many entrepreneurs maybe sometimes put the cart before the horse, and they're not looking at some of those key key metrics or KPIs uh, to really know where they're going in their business. So thanks for sharing that, and definitely um, you know good for our topic today as we kind of transition into our main topic of how can you help our audience of real estate investors? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, asset management is, is such a, a great place to start because it, it doesn't get taught by, by a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of gurus out there that teach you how to get your first deal, but sure. they don't teach you what to do after you get your deal. And so uh, that's, that's, a, that's a critical piece. That's where the, um, you know, the rubber meets the road. And there's, there's so many good opportunities. You don't have to uh, be, you know, a scientist or go to get your MBA to do all this stuff. There's a lot of like easy stuff that you can do um, that, uh, you know, that anyone just starting out can at least, you know, get ahead, uh, do, you know, doing doing that. Sure. So like as you're looking or evaluating maybe uh – you know, sourcing deals. Are you looking for some key things that maybe the asset managers are not doing? And maybe share some of those things that you are looking for as you're sourcing some potential opportunities. Yeah, I'll talk about the deal we have under contract right now. So okay. um, it's a 256 unit, and um, we, you know, we looked at the the the, the T12, um, mm -hmm. and we saw the water bill that was twice as high, at least, than our other properties with the same amount of units. We're like, huh, that's that's interesting. What's what's going on there? Is there leaks? Uh, is there no low flow? They they have to have low flow. Why? That doesn't make any sense, you know. Um, but we were able to look at some pictures and, and um, uh, on the website and then see that there, you know, the gallons per flush on the toilets were, uh, I think, like three point five gallons. And on a low flow toilet, that's point eight. Mm -hmm. So we thought that that was a good opportunity there. But 
obviously not until we did our due diligence did we see uh, it was it was all um, you know they didn't have any low flow on that property and so um, that's a hundred and thirty eight thousand uh, dollar savings that we can get at, at fifty percent savings the plumber actually had a higher savings um, once you install the uh, the the equipment which could you know we'll we'll do the whole property in six days so when you sure. divide it by the cap rate so we divide that that savings uh, by five percent. And that's almost $3 million in, in value that we can create right away on a property. So that's, that's huge. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll also want to look at the, uh, the rents, you know, where are the rents now, where, where, where they should be based on the comps in the area. And that, that, that's huge as well because um, where we operate typically, um, you know, that's not picked over like some of the other cities where the deals are just turning every two or three years. You might have an owner that has probably made really good money, but they they've kind of fallen asleep at the property. They don't visit it, and we're seeing rents uh, sometimes that we could push three, four hundred dollars. Um, so that that's a tremendous value add that that, that we look for as well. No, absolutely. I mean, it makes so much sense, and it's it's always crazy to me where you see these assets. Someone took it over, and it's like they start managing it well but then like you said they just fall asleep and three or four years later whether they maybe they accumulated so much money and so they just don't care anymore or what it, they're happy with the cash flow but there's it's always surprising to me how much value add are truly in a lot of these assets and and where you can really um you know push push that noi so um it sounds like you know low flow toilets obviously in these these bigger things um bad property managers is your company uh vertically integrated do you guys do all your own property management at your at your assets yeah we 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 are not we don't want to be okay. um my old business um we had over 700 employees and 700 independent contractors and it was just an hr nightmare yeah and uh i know a lot of people rave about being it vertically integrated it's funny i was talking to someone else the other day and and he seconded my opinion that you know it's for us we'd rather be nimble um if we don't like a city we could change um and i'm relying on a, on a company that's got 35 plus years of doing uh property management in that area so i can lean on them um yeah. are they perfect no if i have my own team would they be perfect no but yeah. <laughs> i understand their gaps and I could I could uh, supplement those gaps and not have that that you know that massive payroll and, and managing and a second business. Quite honestly, I could focus yeah. on what I do best and rely on, on on their expertise as well. I think that's so important. I think you know you see the shiny object syndrome. Another company doing it, and you think we have to do it that way. And um, you know, I think you knowing your lane and your superpower and clearly you do and you're focusing on it to grow is, is I think uh, what I would re recommend to every entrepreneur out there. You know, I think sometimes we all try to do too much or have our hands trying to do everything and you got to know what you're good at and what you're not good at. Um, and so, so it sounds like one property manager manages all your assets then, is that correct? Uh, they manage almost all of them. Um, okay. I have a, a deal with another partner. We, we were working with someone else. Um, and in another city, we have uh, someone else as well. But for the most part, um, uh, the, they'll manage, uh, they manage uh, five of our so. assets right now. And they're going to manage our, our sixth one once we, once we close on that. Okay. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I always, I, I find it tough to find great property managers. So it's kind of like once you do find that amazing person or company, you, you always have to stick with them. Um, so what are some other things, Gary, that maybe you're, you guys are looking for, whether either, either before close when you're doing your due diligence or maybe after close to really enhance the value or, or boost the NOI on these properties? Yeah. So you, you want to go through your expenses, but you know, ideally, you're not going to really trim uh, that much on, on the expenses. You know, Maybe they have an extra employee or uh, someone that you really don't need, um, uh, but you also want to, you know, really look at the income line too. So on this current property, they have patios but no enclosures. So we know if we enclose it, we, you know, it doesn't have to be a full gate and everything, um, and it'll cost uh, about a thousand dollars. We can charge fifty dollars um, for that uh, that for that amenity, basically. Mm -hmm. And so we're paying it off in, in, in like a year and a half, which is, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's something, um, maybe preferred parking. So if you, if, if there's 
too much covered parking then you really can't charge maybe you can you can also do some preferred spots so there's little things that you can add um, that you know all these little different levers that you that you pull adds up to a lot of money in, in the long run and you want to keep adding more and more levers to to boost your NOI absolutely do you look for things like uh, pet rent or you know like implementing rubs or, or kind of being aggressive with some of those strategies or, or knowing that like you said maybe you're not turning the assets over in two years that you're kind of looking at a little bit more longer term approach or like kind of looking for those things in, in the long term yeah uh, on this current deal as well they didn't they don't charge pet rent and we know that 104 units have pets now some <laughs> of them may be service animals sure um and we're not going to be able to collect all that money up front. So I think we underwrote it for like 25% capture year one, 50% capture year two. And so we'll, sl we'll slowly be able to capture that. But again, that's, that's more money uh, to be had. Um, a lot of times um, uh, there's more opportunity in rubs to gain a little bit more um, bill back on the uh, utility expenses. Um, you know, maybe there's... Um, uh, certain locations of the property that are better than others that you can maybe get a little rump bump. So we'll we'll study the the rent roll and uh, and see where we could tweak up uh, for for some units and and some units that we may need to tweak down. So we're not we're not looking at occupancy as a whole. We're always breaking down uh, the data to see where we can constantly keep pushing. Very nice. Is there a certain percentage or value add that you guys look for in every deal to make sure, you know, if, if like this one didn't have the water issue, would it be a no go because, you know, it just didn't pencil out at that point or help help me understand that? Yeah, good, good question. You know, we don't have a set. Um, it really we're IRR driven. Okay? OK, you know what? Where? We're not solely focused on the going in cap rate, but where we can drive um, the cap rate over the course of the year by executing our business plan. So we have lots of different tools in our in our uh, chest, and so it's just a matter of which which levers are going to work for this property. You know, maybe it's uh, some design features that it just needs paint and uh, you know a, an attractive mural and, and something on the outside that. Now you can't necessarily equate that with rent, but we know if we have a nice looking property that that really drives um, residents coming in and, 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 and boosts our occupancy. And we don't have to spend as much on the interiors if we have a really nice exterior. Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, so in general, like how much do you typically boost the NOI in the first year on, on your assets? Yeah, so um, I, I didn't, we never really measured it until about a couple months ago when I saw it in someone else's deck. And we realized when we when we did the measurements, we're averaging 40% in our portfolio um, of NOI um, um, boost in the first year, which was it, it, it blew us away that we were able I was to, to say achieve that. Blows that. me away, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know we you know we've done value adds, but I didn't realize how much we were really you know boosting it. Um, sure. So uh, yeah, we so we we don't necessarily target 40%. We you know we we are. We, we want good value add deals, but um, yeah, we've been, we've been, we've done that uh, nine out of 10 times. The 10th time is just, it's cause it's a, a construction deal basically. So uh, gotcha. that's, that's been our average. Yeah. No, that's, that's phenomenal. And I yeah. think it, 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 it speaks to the holistic approach you're looking at when you're looking at these and it's like, Hey, where can we add the value? Where can we boost our NOI? And uh, you clearly, you've been successful, uh, <laughs> you know, so um, I mean, do you have, what advice would you give to a listener maybe that hasn't yet started investing in real estate, but yet they want to, like, do you think, uh, you know, deals like with yourself, maybe a syndication is a better way, like as an LP to get started, or perhaps just getting out there and buying a fourplex or eightplex or something and, and trying to learn, learn the ropes themselves? Yeah, so, you know, I had a single family and then I started investing with some other people as, a, as an LP before being a GP. And I knew that that was my path. But everyone's different. Maybe they don't have the time uh, to, to um, if, they, if they don't want to be an operator or they don't have that, uh, that skill set. Um, so they, so that what they need to do is partner with someone else, invest with someone else. Every, every person's lifestyle is, is different. So figure out what, what you want 
uh, and then go ahead and do your due diligence on, on, on who you're going to invest with. Maybe partner with someone else, whether it's an LP investment or a GP, so that you can you can share expertise and, and, and maybe share blind spots, you know, find out, you know, someone's seeing something else. So it just helps. Don't go at it alone. Uh, I think um, um, one thing that was ingrained with me um, when I started uh, real estate investing was real estate is a team sport. And so that really, really helps you because uh, for some people, you know, it's just, um, a, you know, a brand new thing for them. So, um, you know, ha you know, share, um, share that experience with someone else so they can help you and you can help them. Any recommendations on like where you best place to find partners, you know, maybe specifically in multifamily or where you've been successful there? Yeah. Uh, you know, going to meetups, going to real estate conferences. And that's how I, you know, I, I met partners there, um, uh, met investors there. Um, um, so yeah, just going to them and seeing, meeting good people, you know, it's, it's, yeah. You know, network, 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 you know, um, you never know where your next partner is or where you're going to find your next deal or whatnot. So uh, just being out there and talking real estate, it, it, it provides rocket fuel for you. Um, you'll gain a ton of knowledge just by talking to other people, what you're doing, what they're doing, what they're seeing. Um, there is never a meetup or a conference that I don't learn something that someone else is doing that either I can implement or, or watch out for. So. Uh, you just have to be, you know, be active, go out, you know, and go to events. Yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. Um, you know, do you have any, you know, let's say, you know, I, I, we were talking earlier, you know, I have a 10 unit under contract right now in, in South Carolina. Are there any things that you look for, like maybe red flags in an asset or perhaps things that you've learned over time that maybe like the water thing that you're like, well, we thought it was a toilet, but really they just have a really high water bill or a really big green area that, you know, is currently being managed. Any red flags that you kind of look for or try to stay away from perhaps? Yeah, you know, I, you know, uh, if you walk a property, it's how, how is it maintained? You know, if it's, if they don't treat it well, then most likely things are going to break sooner rather than later because, you know, if, if, if it's not clean, if it's not taken care of, then all the mechanicals are not taken care of. The roof is not taken care of. Yeah. You know, they're, they're using, uh, you know, glue and, uh, and, and band-aids to keep things yeah. together, you know? So I think that that's a, that's a warning sign. You know, how is their, their paperwork? Is it organized or not? Now, you know, some of the best deals you're going to find that the owner has, you know, it's all on paper and it's a mess. But, yeah. um, you know, that could be a sign too, like if they're just not, organized you know um it may be really good opportunity it may it may show signs of you know wear and tear um, but obviously you always want to get your mechanicals uh, you know inspected roof plumbing electrical uh hvac um because things break all the time even if it has a perfect in, uh, inspection and you want to make sure you have uh margin for error you have reserves for these things because to expect nothing to break and everything to go perfect, you know, is, is foolish. Yeah, for sure. Now, are you finding right now in the market today that sellers are being a little bit more reasonable with, with inspections and, and findings on inspections, or are they still expecting kind of as is value when you, when you get a per, uh, one under contract? You know, we will always build in, um, you know, for our properties, let's say a hundred thousand for HVAC, hundred thousand for for a roof. You know, or even if it's if if it's done, um, if it's done within the last few years. If it's not, then I'm going to add a lot more money. But I always ha want to have, um, assuming it's not perfect, and, and build it in. But now, if if something major wrong, that's when I'll go back and, and talk to the seller because okay. if if they don't work with me on it, they're going to have to work on it with the next uh, buyer. But I, I do, you know, I don't expect everything to be perfect, but sure. um, um, if, if, if something isn't, then you have to just give your, you know, he, he, this is the cost, this is what they said, maybe you'll get a second estimate, um, and maybe you meet somewhere in the middle, you know, yeah. um, but don't be afraid to have those conversations uh, if it's, if, if there's a lot, of, uh, if, you know, something needs to be fixed or um, is, is, is in bad shape. Yeah, it's funny, I, I think I got, 
trained in, hey, you don't retrade, you don't ever, you know, once the contract's signed, and it's like, it's hard because residential's, you know, completely different than multifamily, and it's it's kind of where the market's at, you know, so I have those conversations a lot of times up front with a broker, like, how reasonable is this guy, you know, I know it's a value add, but I'm expecting about this much CapEx, if, if it's double, like, I'm going to come back to you, and we're going to negotiate or something along those lines, I don't know if that's something you do, but I, I just I, I try to be frank and transparent when I'm talking to these brokers and, and sellers. And, you know, I, I just kind of hope the same and, in, in, you know, respect in, in return. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, if you have a good rapport with the brokers and you just let, you let them know, like, this is not unreasonable. Like, if you if you said that the, the roofs were done within the last few years, it should be in really good shape. And yep. if an inspector says, no, it's not, then, you know you you maybe need to allocate twice as much money as you originally thought you don't want to nickel and dime someone but if it's sure. if it's significant then then absolutely you've got to have that conversation you have to protect yourself your investors and you have to have those hard conversations but um you know sometimes sellers are unreasonable and and so be it but hopefully the broker um is, you know is can understand and 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 plead your case and and uh and, and make things a, a smooth trans, a transaction. Um, what's, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now in the real estate, in real estate investing or maybe sourcing deals um, and kind of how are you tackling it? Yeah, sourcing deals is definitely harder. We're, we're under contract for our first deal in 10 months now. Um, there's definitely a gap between what the sellers are willing to sell for and what we're willing to pay. Um, certainly the, the lending environment is tougher. You're getting less leverage, um, higher rates. You have to raise more. So you just build that into your underwriting and, yeah. and if it works, it works. And, um, so it's, th things are definitely more challenging right now. Uh, you know, there's definitely a herd mentality and so it's a great time to buy, but a lot of people are scared to invest right now because they, yeah. they listen to the media. Um, you know, I think people will be regretting uh, get, not getting into deals right now, and and they're hoping for this you know tsunami of great deals of pennies on the dollar that's that's not going to be coming down the pipeline. Um, but uh, you know when everyone's investing, then you know prices are really high, and 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 you're 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 you know I won't say you're overpaying, but you're you're paying for a premium. So right now things are at a really good discount, but. Um, Raising capital is hard, and 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 navigating the uh, the lending environment is, is 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 tougher. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I'm experiencing some of those same same things. But you know, I'm looking to buy, and I'm you know, I think uh, agree with you that this is a good time to buy. And when rates do come down, it's gonna it's gonna be that herd mentality. Everyone jumps back in, right? And you're gonna be paying those premiums for assets and. Um, a bunch of investors will probably be get left at the wayside because they won't be able to get into deals or, you know, just they have their money sitting there right now. So is there anything on asset management maybe I haven't asked that you'd like to share any best practices or anything maybe I didn't cover? Um, I, I think another one is uh, really important is uh, not making announcements when you're stopping by the property. And you've got to stop by your property on a consistent basis because... Yeah. Just because they tell you something is done, I've I've been in situations where it hasn't been done, and you go to the property and you're like, "What the heck?" You know, like you said it was done. I want to believe you, but you're you're lying to me. You know, and yeah. so you ask for pictures or whatnot, but you know, going unannounced uh, and visiting your property on on a regular basis it builds rapport with your with your team. Mm -hmm. They um, they know that you're going to be coming by, um, so it just raises their game and. And setting up those expectations up uh, are, are so important. Like anything else, it's it's people business, and so you've got to treat your people right. You've got to you've got to value them. You've got to drop in and just let them know that you know you're you take this very seriously, and they should take it very seriously as well. You know they punch in and punch out, and so you've got to make sure that they have that ownership thinking, and that if they have that ownership thinking, that that could mean. Um, you know, a huge difference to your property in and why because now they, you know, they're pick, they're making an effort to pick up a little extra trash or, or that sale or keeping that occupancy up or that collecting on on delinquency and, and that goes a really long way from someone caring about what they do versus not caring about what they do.
What is up, Hot REI Nation? My name is Jordan Nadella with Simplicity Lending Group and powered by Nexa Mortgage. As the nation's largest broker, Nexa Mortgage offers a variety of creative and competitive loan options through our 170 plus partnerships to help you achieve home ownership with the speed and service that you deserve. Whether you are a first time home buyer or an experienced investor, I'm dedicated to finding the right program to fit your financial goal. My mission is to make home ownership a very easy and seamless process from start to finish. If you are in the market today to purchase real estate, please contact me to find the best mortgage solution for your needs. No, that's that's great advice. And I think uh, so many people want to be so passive and they never want to do things or they think everything's going to be mailbox money. And I tell a lot of investors, unless you're really like an LP in a syndication, like real estate investing is not passive. You're, you, even if you're managing the manager, you, you trust but verify, like you mentioned, you know, hey, yeah, we got that painting done or we got that, that you know, unit done and you drive by and you're like, there's still contractors outside. I can't lease that unit tomorrow, you know. So I, I love that advice and thanks for sharing. Um, I think we've, 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 we've delved into a lot of the asset management. So, uh, Gary, are you ready for the hot seat? Let's go. All right. We ask all our guests the same final four hot questions. And so, number one, what's one book you'd recommend to someone wanting to know more about real estate investing? Well, I've got to recommend my book, Best in Class, which is, I think, the only book out there on asset management. Please do. I, I, I've read it myself, love it, and a great recommendation. And definitely get out there and get Best in Class if, if you haven't read it yet. Um, what's your favorite productivity tip, trick, tool, maybe a time saver app that lets you get more done than the average person? Okay, so this is going to be really boring, uh, but I'm going to say my calendar because okay. if I, 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 I calendar everything. And so that makes sure I get it done, whether it's working out or just time to think about my business versus working in my business. Just putting it all on the calendar really m makes me adhere to that schedule and, and get it done versus, um, you know, just maybe a to-do list or whatnot. So, because I'm like everyone else, I'll push things off. I won't, you know, get to it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined, but there, there are some things that I just hate doing. And so <laughs> I've got to calendar it and, to, and that really helps me stay on task. Yeah, for sure. I love, I'm, I'm a big, you know, planner and I have to put it in my calendar like you, it just doesn't get done uh, with so much going on in our lives. Gary, what's your biggest real estate mistake or failure and what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, I would say um, doing doing enough due diligence. So when I, I first invested as an LP and someone else, you know, they had a meetup and they sounded like they really knew what they were doing, but I didn't fully understand the deal. and. Um, and I've also done that with other, I've had friends recommend someone to, oh yeah, invest with them, like they do really well. And those, the ones that I don't do my due diligence, I've been burned. And so yeah. just like whether it's your own deal or investing with someone else, really get to know that person, really get to know that deal, do the work, don't be lazy. And um, um, you know, you'll just, you'll benefit from that greatly. No, that's great advice. And then finally, if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Yeah, I would say uh, I want to be remembered as, a, as an honorable man, doing, doing the right things, doing what I say I'm going to do. Uh, that's really important to me and, you know, leaving the world a, a better place than where I, 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 uh, than when I, when I came here. So um, that, that's really important to me. Oh, that's amazing. Um, the best place for our Hot RI community to connect with Gary is going to be at uh, breakadaycapital.com. You can also find him on YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and we'll share all his uh, contact information in our show notes. Gary, man, this was a lot of fun and super educational for me, and really appreciate you sharing uh, so much of your, your best practices uh, with asset management with our, with our team today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Travis. Really enjoyed our talk. Yeah, of course. And thank you uh, to the audience for tuning in today and commit to taking action today to move your investing forward. Take care and God bless. Thank you for listening to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast. Check out our website, hotrei.com for additional content and resources. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave a review so we can continue to bring even more value to others through real estate investing.